welcome to day 17 of Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. We're doing five minute exercises, one each on the mind, the body, and the soul. And it's designed to transform our life. Hi, my name is Pia McAdams. I am a college professor teaching accounting. And I also am a certified coach with an emphasis in small business and personal finance and also fitness. I help people reach the goals in that area. I want to take the time to welcome you to the, the challenge. This is a 30-day challenge, and we are on day 17. And guys, this is so exciting. Like, I really don't understand. Like, I hope you understand um, what I'm talking about here with this cycle, cybernetics, with our mind board, uh, portion. Let me kind of back up for those of you that are just now joining me. I get so excited. I just can't wait to share this stuff with you. So for the mind portion, we are reading a book called Cycle Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. For the body portion, we're doing the sun salutations for yoga. And then for the soul portion of the exercise, we are doing a five-minute meditation where we're focusing on our breath. So that's what this challenge is. And by the way, with this challenge, you know, it's just 15 minutes out of your whole 24 hours. And I know some of you are saying, well, I don't have 15 minutes all at one time. Whatever reason, it's okay. But it's okay to break it up. Like, I've actually been talking to people. They were giving me, asking me for recommendations on how to do this. And it really depends on you. One thing that I, what I would recommend is, for instance, in the morning when you get up, do the yoga. You know, get up and do five minutes of yoga. That will get your body moving, get the blood flowing, and, and wake you up. Jerry, wake you up and put you in the general mood. And then midday, take another five minutes during maybe lunchtime or just before your lunch um, period. Just take five minutes just to meditate, just to clear your mind and to refocus. And that will get you back on track for the remaining portion of your day. And then just before you go to bed, then do, listen to the reading. Because what that's going to do is going to put something positive in your brain so that when you go to sleep, you're going to wake up with a positive attitude and then you can start all over again. Now, obviously, you can choose to do it however you want, but that's just a suggestion or a recommendation if you don't have 15 minutes all at one time for some reason. So anyway, so I want to now get started with the mind portion because I'm so excited about this because I just thought about this as I was getting dressed. And what I've been talking about with the cyber um, cyber cybernetics is that this is like our own garment. Guys, we have our own garment right here with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No, not, no fail. So what is garment? Duh, it's your navigation system that you use in your car. I mean, yours might be a Tom Tom or a Magellan. Mine is a garment. Same concept, right? Well, we have this garment. And what do you do with the garment? You program it to where you want to go. Do you have to put in where you start? No, because you did that when you first bought it, right? And then it calculates where you are. So it already knows where you are. And then based upon where you are, you program where you want to go. And then it routes it for you, routes the best direction for you. And you can even choose sometimes, you know, like, you know, um, avoid highways and all that kind of stuff. But you get to program it, right? Well, we have that same internal guidance system with us. It's called our intuition. It actually does the same thing. It's just that we don't trust it for some reason or another unless we really, really need it. Like, think in terms of, like, whenever you've been in the elevator and someone's suspect kind of gets on and, like, the hairs on the back of your neck kind of stick up and you're like, okay, I really shouldn't be here. That's your intuition talking to you. That's your garment. So it does work. You just got to learn to trust it all the time. And I know for me, when I use my Garmin, I like to kind of look ahead, like I look at the details and see what's coming up because I don't like surprises. Like if I'm in the left lane, all of a sudden it says, turn right here. I'm like, okay, can you have told me that like a couple miles back or a couple yards back where I have enough time to get in the room? Well, our navigation doesn't work exactly like that, meaning we won't be able to see our journey. But like the navigation, guess what it does do? If you do miss your turn or if you get off your mark, your target, then it's going to reroute you. Yes, and sometimes it may have you U-turn, but it's going to reroute you. So at no point will you be off your target. It's going to get you to your goal. Now, just like the, um, the garment as well, what programs it is the software. So if you're having trouble reaching your goals, perhaps your Garmin, your internal guidance system, needs new software. So in this case, the software is going to be based upon our self-image. So if you have a negative self-image about yourself, and this is from past experiences, past failures, um, past things that happened in your childhood, that kind of shapes who you are. If you're not reaching your goal like how you want to, it seems like you're on a rocky road instead of like a straight, narrow road, it's because it may be time for you to program your software. And that's what we're learning about in this book is that we can actually reprogram our garment. We can actually reprogram our internal guidance system so that it puts us on the straight and narrow so we feel more accomplished in it when we get to our, when we, as we're going toward our goal. And the two ways that we've talked about so far 
is one is through imagination and the other one is through mental pictures. So that's where we are in the reading. Now, where we are, we are actually on chapter five and I'm reading underneath where it says, let sleeping dogs lie. What this is basically talking about, just kind of catch you up from the previous days, particularly yesterday. This is talking about, there's really no need for you to bring up your past failures in order to figure out where you're going. So like the Garmin, right? You don't put in where have you been, you just put in where you want to go and it's going to make the calculation from where you are now on. So that's where I am in the reading. So let's go ahead and get started. Some good stuff, guys. Five minutes is all. Five minutes. Okay. It says, these memories of past failures do not harm as long as you could consciously thought, as long as our conscious thought and attention are focused on a positive goal to be accomplished. Therefore, it is best to let those sleeping dogs lie. Our errors, mistakes, failures, and sometimes even our humiliations were necessary steps in the learning process. However, they were meant to be a means to an end, not an end in themselves. When they have served their purpose, they should be forgotten. If we consciously dwell on the error or consciously feel guilty about the error and keep berating ourselves because of it, then unwittingly, the error or failure becomes the goal that is consciously held in the imagination and the memory. The, unhappy, the unhappiest of mortals is the man who insists on reliving the past over and over in imagination, continuously criticizing himself for past mistakes, continuously condemning himself for past sin. Don't do it. I shall never forget one of my uh, many women patients who tortured herself for her unhappy past so much that she destroyed any chances of happiness in the present. She had lived for, you, for years in bitterness and resentment as the direct result of a serious hair, heart, a hair lip that caused her to shun people and to develop over the years a personality that was stunted, crabby, and completely tuned against the world and everything in it. She had no friends because she imagined that no one would be friendly with the person who looked so awful. She deliberately avoided people or, what's worse, consistently alienated people with her sour, defensive attitude. Surgery cured her physical problem. Then she tried to make the adjustment and to begin living with people in harmony and friendlessness, but found that her past experiences kept getting in the way. She felt that despite her new appearance, she could not make friends and be happy because no one would forgive her for what she had been before the operation. She wound up making the same mistakes she had made before she was unhappy as ever. She did not really begin to live until she learned to stop condemning herself for what she had been in the past and to stop reliving in her imagination all the unhappy events that have brought her to my office for surgery. By the way, in case you're just joining me, welcome Dr. Um, Maxwell. He's a plastic surgeon, and so he's talking about a patient that, um, that he helped. Continuously criticizing yourself for past mistakes and errors does not help matters, but on the other hand, tends to perpetuate the very behavior you would change. Memories of your past failures can adversely affect present performance if we dwell on them and foolishly conclude, I failed yesterday, therefore it follows that I will fail again today. However, this does not prove that unconscious reaction patterns have any power in themselves to repeat and perpetuate themselves, or that all buried memories of failures must be eradicated before behavior can be changed. If we are victimized, it is by our own conscious thinking mind and not by the unconscious. For it is with the thinking part of our personality that we draw conclusions and select the goal images that we shall concentrate upon. The minute that we change our minds and stop living or giving power to the past, the past with its mistakes loses its power over us. Ignore past failures and forge ahead. Here again, hypnosis furnishes convincing proof when a shine timid wallflower flower is told in hypnosis and believes or thinks that he is bold, self-confidence, or raider, his reaction patterns are changed instantly. He suddenly acts as he currently behaves. His attention is given over completely to the positive desired goal and no thought or consideration whatsoever is given to past failures. So I'm going to stop right there. But what this is talking about, we talked earlier about hypnosis and the power of that and how we are all uh, hypnotized to an extent based upon our surroundings, like our media, the people we hang around with, and so on and so forth, even our own selves, the things that we tell ourselves. So if you're constantly berating yourself or telling yourself negative things, guess what? You're hypnotizing yourself to be that very thing. Same thing with your self-image that we talked about in the past. 
this is all programmed based upon your failures and this, that, and the other. So if you're constantly being negative to yourself, then all you're doing is perpetuating negativity. So therefore, you need to surround yourself around positivity. All right, so that concludes the mind portion of the challenge. And now we're going to move on to the uh, body portion. We're going to do a five-minute yoga salutation. And if you just joined me, hi, welcome. Thank you for joining me. We are doing 15 minutes of positive things for all for all parts of us because you know a lot of times people when they want to let's say get in shape or do something about reaching their goals they do something physical it's like always oh, about the action it's generally based upon the physical but we are we are made up of mind body and soul so why are you just doing something for the body and not doing anything for your mind or doing anything for the soul so that's what the purpose of this challenge is okay so again guys remember this is a transform your life. This is not for you just to watch me. I want you to join in with me. This is about the experience. In other words, you're not going to get out much out of it just by watching it. You have, to, you have to experience it for yourself. So do the yoga. And by the way, um, if you don't know what I'm doing, like I said, i got to watch what you're doing because otherwise I don't know what I'm doing. I have actually pre-recorded um, the yoga where I actually walk you through it. And I also pre-recorded the mind where I tell you why I chose this particular book and what attracted me to this book. And I also pre-recorded the meditation, which shows you how to do the Ujjayi breaths. So you can look for that either on my fan page or you can go to my YouTube channel. All the videos are there as well. Okay, so yoga and then immediately going on to the meditation.
Namaste. Now we're moving on to the meditation. So I want you to sit in a nice comfortable position. And by the way, guys, if you have your shoes on, take your shoes off so that your feet can be grounded to the floor if you're sitting down in a chair. We're going to use you that breath. We're going to inhale for a count of one and exhale for a count of two. With you that breathing, your abdomen expands as your breath inhales. And as you exhale, your abdomen goes back in. Same thing, your chest it expands up. As the diaphragm moves up, it expands out and it goes back down. Again, inhaling for a count of one, exhaling for a count of two. Be patient and be gentle with yourself. As you're meditating, as a thought comes into your mind, just gently push them aside and focus on your breath.
release, relax, and return refreshed and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. Okay, that concludes day 17 of the Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. You guys have a blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.